This landscape is very much like it's been for the last 200 million years. This is where the Appalachians were very large at the time. They're over 35,000 feet high. This is on basically a magmatic rampart that was moving up in the earth and moving up and pushing these sediments aside. We're here in the summit of Devil's Den with a little round top behind us in the distance. And you can see the, the military advantage, these boulders and all this terrain in here. It makes an ideal place, these big steps, these cliffs and things, for a battlefield, for a, almost like a self-made fortress. When you are talking about battle formations of the 19th century, particularly the land battles of the American Civil War, terrain is crucial, particularly if you are the army that's choosing to be on the defensive. You are choosing higher ground, you are choosing terrain such as Devil's Den that is particularly broken ground. Nature's already built a fort for you. Your soldiers are gonna be physically protected from the enemy firepower because of these rocks. These rocks we know now are 198 million years old. We know that with great certainty. So when guys are sliding over it, crawling around on this thing, they're gonna feel it and they're gonna be rubbing off their buttons. They're gonna be thinking about getting into somewhere, a niche, a little area to lay in and hide. So this was a great military advantage to have this. But just look behind us. You look up behind us at something that's even more defensible, spectacular. Brigadier General Henry Benning, after his troops capture Devil's Den, he looks across at Little Round Top. The whole task daunts him, which is why he never attacks. In fact, they hunker down on Devil's Den and use it as a base for sharpshooters sniping at Little Round Top. The rocks have a natural cleft in them where they've been opened up. And what has happened here really is during the emplacement of this body, there are large joints, cooling cracks, thermal contraction cracks. But once the Confederates overran this area, this took on a different perspective. It was now a place where a sniper could sit behind and they could take a prolonged viewpoint. On the night of July 1st, George Gordon Meade, who is the commander of the Union Army of the Potomac, chose Little Round Top as its anchor for its defensive line. It is high, it's got steep sides, and it's got also the broken ground. It's almost perfect for the defense. And the high ground is the most geological interesting bodies too. These magmatic rocks, and these basaltic rocks, they tell us about the whole evolution of the Earth. And so these are, are fantastically strategic places. The Battle of Little Round Top begins around 4.30 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon of July the 2nd as the Confederate soldiers run into reinforcements which had been brought to Little Round Top by Union's Brigadier General Governor Warren. A four-regiment brigade totaling about 1,300 men get to the hill just before the first Confederate attack a second Union Brigade, totaling approximately 1,500, 1,600 men, is also positioned on Little Round Top. We're talking almost 3,000 soldiers eventually defend Little Round Top itself. Finally, towards the end, the Southern Army was spilled up, almost like a waterfall up on the side of Big Round Top, a Union group charging them with bayonets, and they panicked. The Pennsylvania, New York, Michigan troops up on Little Round Top themselves looked down and they said it was the darndest thing we ever saw. These main troopers, maybe only 250 or so, 300 men now, chasing six or seven or 800 Confederates. The ultimate factor that decides battles in the Civil War is the fighting ability, the fighting bravery, the audacity of the individual soldiers. They are told, you are fighting to defend your wives, your daughters, your mothers. You are fighting for your home. 